I am an Apple fanboy. Yeah, I said it. I even have one of the first Apple watches that was ever made. Anyways, I've had this old Mac sitting in my garage for like 10 years, and I was looking at it the other day and I thought, I need to do something with that thing or just throw it away. Like at this point, I'm definitely not gonna use it again. So I got to thinking and researching and I came across these really cool benches that people make with two of these towers. They're super cool, but the problem is I only have one and I didn't wanna buy another one. So I asked myself, what other kind of furniture could I make with just one of these? And honestly, the options are pretty limited. I suppose you could like make a chair, but I decided on a small coffee table. I don't normally do projects like this. This isn't a woodworking or crafts channel. We mostly talk business and side hustle stuff, but I do like trying new things, exploring new ideas, and this definitely fits that. So first off, this tower was extremely heavy. I'm gonna guess it's like 40 to 50 pounds, so I decided to make my life easier just by emptying it all out. Did I say easier? Because this literally took me four hours. Apple designs their products not to be messed with, and that's very clear when you start taking them apart. It's like a giant puzzle. This piece has to be removed before this piece, and you gotta move that piece, otherwise that piece can't move. You have to almost do it in order, otherwise you're going to run into roadblocks. Fortunately, there were some decent tutorials on YouTube, so when I felt lost, I could rely on those to help me. And this is for the tech people out there, but I was curious about this little battery on the board. I'm no expert, but can someone please tell me why it's there? We're almost done here, but this last part right here, you can kind of see it in there, all those cords all that stuff, that's impossible to get out, I swear. I, like, I, I can't figure it out. I'm having to cut everything and yeah, it's not going great, but this is everything we have so far. Just gotta keep going. I ended up having to bend a couple pieces just to get them out, but here's what the emptied case looks like and this is everything we took out. It was so much lighter and also because I was going to be drilling holes into the case, it was helpful that it was empty because then I could access the inside and outside easily. After spending that night emptying the case, I made a very rough design in Photoshop. I wanted to add these sort of black accent pieces made out of wood. That way too, I'd have a good place to screw in my legs and also the mounts for the glass on top. It's definitely odd looking, but I like it. Ooh, and I almost forgot. This is like my favorite part. Inside the case, I decided to mount a screen so that when you're looking down at the glass, you can see some really cool visuals. Think like Windows Media Player days. I don't know, it's a little extra, but that's sort of the vibe of this whole project. After I planned out the design, it was time for the first Home Depot trip. I picked up some wood to build the frame of the table. Shout out to this lady for cutting a couple pieces for me. I got home and started taking measurements for where I wanted to bolt the bottom frame to the Mac case. I made some little punches in the metal with this screwdriver. I didn't have an actual center punch, but this worked good enough. And then I got to drill in. Now I've never drilled into metal like this before, but I found that taking your time and applying just the right amount of pressure worked best. From what I've read online, you want your bit to create these large metal twists like this. Once my four mounting holes were drilled into the case, I grabbed my bottom baseboard and lined it up where I wanted it on the case. I marked my holes with this marker and then drilled them. Now this next step was another first for me. The edges on this plywood were pretty meh looking. It wasn't absolutely necessary to do this, but I decided to apply some wood filler to all four of the sides and then sand them down. This just smoothed them out a bit. There's still not perfect, but they're way better than they were. I vacuumed out the case because there was still a bunch of metal pieces in there from before, and then it was painting time. I gave the bottom board a solid two to three coats of black. Now it's time to mount our feet. I just got this four pack on Amazon. They were like 20 to 30 bucks. I thought that shape wise, they matched the vibe of this old Mac and they have a similar brush metal finish. I measured exactly where I wanted the feet to go, poked some little holes in the wood, and then mounted all four feet. At this point, I already had a table. I could have just been done here. This would hold my drinks next to the couch, but no, I lined up the Mac with the new base and this is where it started looking like the design I came up with. I bolted everything together and then it was time to figure out how to mount the screen on the top. All right, so in here is the next edition that'll hopefully go on the Apple table. This is kind of a weird idea, but I'm hoping it works out. Okay, so this is one of those like portable monitors. People like put them on the sides of their laptops. Basically, it's just a monitor that you can run an extra screen on for your computer or like play Xbox or PlayStation on. But what I want to do is take this... <laughs> What I want to do is take this screen and kind of put it underneath the glass somehow and have it show like really cool patterns. But yeah, we got to see if this even fits. Here's the screen. We got a lot to figure out. The good news is that the screen will fit nicely in here, but mounting it is going to be the tricky part. So with some Trailer Park Boys inspired creativity, I decided to build a rectangular frame that would lay on top of the Mac case and hold the screen up. I could also use this frame to mount my glass standoffs to, and also it would tie into the black color that we already have mounted to the bottom of the case. So it was a win-win. Win. win. <laughs> I took took more measurements, 
bottoms, cut more boards, did some sanding on the edges, and then it was back to Home Depot for trip number two. If you guys ever do a house project or anything like this, you know there's a three trip Home Depot minimum to this stuff. You never get everything you need all in one go. But I grabbed some brackets to hold the wood together and also a backing sheet that would hold my screen below the frame. And then it was back home to keep putting this thing together. I put the frame together using just these simple two screw brackets and it fit perfectly on top. Actually, if I were to redo this project, I might just keep the wood natural like this. It reminds me of the tabletops that Apple has in their stores almost. But I think it looks good with the brushed metal. I did a fit check with the screen and that looked good. And then I started creating the part of the top frame that would hold the screen below. I cut these little chunks of wood and screwed them into the back. And then I switched gears and got out the Dremel and cut off this bar that was just in my way on the case. First time cutting metal like this and I'm a fan. There's lots of sparks, it makes a cool sound and it's really satisfying when you finally cut through it. I then measured my backing board and cut it to size with just a normal X-Acto knife. Once you score it, you can break it apart easily with your leg. I gave the top frame and the backing board a matching coat of black paint and then let them dry overnight. This project I thought was gonna take maybe a day or two, but honestly guys, it took me probably five days with other work I had to get done too. But I had fun doing it. I sit behind a computer editing a lot of days and just doing something creative out in the garage was a nice change of pace. Anyways, the next day I started with screwing the backboard into the top frame. It looked pretty good. And then I had to mount my glass standoffs on the top. These again are from Amazon. They were under $20, I think. And they come with these two little silicone pieces that protect the glass you're putting between them. Mounting these was simple. Just one screw right through the middle. The big thing here was just making sure all of them were the same distance from the edge as the others. Also, I can't stress this enough, but drilling pilot holes before screwing into wood is key. I have messed up a lot of wood by not doing that. Guys, just do it. But the standoffs went on easily and then it was time for the glass. And this part really scared me. All right guys, so this is the final step. This is just a big piece of glass I bought on Amazon. I think it's meant for tabletops. This one I believe is 24 by 24 inches. Could be slightly bigger. Okay. I don't even know if you guys can see that, but there's our glass. Very nice piece. But yeah, the hard part is gonna be drilling holes into this glass. I've never done it before, but we'll see how it goes. I centered the glass on the table, marked the spots where I needed to make holes with a washable marker, and then got my drill ready. I bought these special diamond tip circle bits on Amazon. I also set up this really high-tech cooling rig. Basically, you just fill up a jug with water, poke a hole near the bottom, and then when you unscrew the cap slightly, you get a nice flow on your drilling spot that helps keep things cool. Everything was going great until... Yeah, uh, definitely a learning experience for me. I was definitely putting too much pressure on the drill, but man, it was taking forever. Cleaning this all up wasn't the part that sucked. It was not knowing what I was gonna do next and how I was gonna finish this thing. I personally just didn't feel comfortable with buying another piece of glass and potentially making the same mistake, so I came up with an alternative. Fortunately, Granger had a sheet of 24 inch by 24 inch plexiglass in stock that is almost as clear as the real deal. The edge isn't quite as nice as a real piece of glass, but I thought it would serve the same function and be a lot easier to drill through. And guys, it was. I used just a basic step style bit for this and it worked perfectly. So a little bump in the road, $60 loss, not too bad. I brought everything inside, took off the rest of the plastic, cleaned off the glass, and then screwed in the tops of the standoffs that I already mounted. It looked good at this point, but I wanted to step it up even more. So I bought this LED light strip and mounted it inside the case. I just thought with the screen on top, it would also be cool if the case lit up as well. Everything was coming together and then there had to be one more issue. When I slid in the screen and wired everything through the case, the wire ended up getting in the way of the case. Basically, I couldn't put the top all the way on. I took this as a sign that I needed to have more fun and cut more metal. So I took out the tool again and got to slicing. After this piece came out, everything fit together perfectly. And this is the moment that you guys have probably been waiting for. Here is my finished retro Mac table. <laughs> I know I mentioned it before, but I can't stress enough how much fun this project was for me. I know this is one of those videos that people are either gonna love or hate. Honestly, I can understand it. This table is very odd looking, but I personally dig it. The process of making it really was relaxing and a nice break from my weekly norm of making more business style content. I obviously still love that stuff, but working on something totally different can sometimes help me get inspired. But I appreciate you guys watching this, giving this video a chance. Let me know what you guys think of the table. Drop a sub if you haven't. I'm trying to hit a million by the end of the year. I'll see you next time. Peace.